By most, if not all major metrics, Donald Trump is currently losing the 2024 election to Vice President Kamala Harris, and his insecurity and rage and desperation were on full display at a campaign rally held earlier today in Pennsylvania, in which he made repeated vicious personal attacks against the vice president, insulting her competence, calling her stupid, demanding that she be impeached and prosecuted, as well as a whole host of other unhinged comments. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we have several clips to talk about in this video, but before we get to any of them, I just want to say to get it out of the way that according to poll after poll after poll, more Americans think that Donald Trump is mentally unfit to be president than not. And more Americans than not think that Vice President Harris is more mentally fit than Trump. Just want to be very clear about this. A recent NBC poll from the last week goes into detail about this with respect to being competent and effective. Vice President Harris leads Trump by five percentage points in terms of temperament. She's 52 percent to his 36 uh, percent in terms of having the necessary mental and physical health to be president. She leads him by 20 percentage points, 54 to 34. This is reflected in most major polls. Donald Trump is seen as too old and too mentally unfit and too incompetent to be president compared to the vice president. This is a fact in terms of polling. OK, despite this, an increasingly furious and triggered and wrathful Donald Trump uh, is trying to persuade his voters that actually he is the very stable genius, the beacon of mental fitness and competence, and that she's actually stupid. And he's making increasingly personal attacks on her intelligence at this rally in Pennsylvania. So we're going to play some of these clips and unpack them together. Crooked Joe Biden became mentally impaired, said, but lying Kamala Harris, honestly, I believe she was born that way. <laughs> There's something wrong with Kamala. And I just don't know what it is, but there is definitely something missing. And you know what? Everybody knows it. Again, that's not reflected in the polling. It seems that more Americans than not, again, in poll after poll after poll, think that Trump is mentally unfit, that Trump is too mentally unhealthy, that Trump is not competent enough to be president compared to the vice president. I think this fact in probably some, you know, at some level of recognition that he is in cognitive decline is driving him to lash out in this way. But it's absolutely insane and contradicted not just by the polls, but also, quite frankly, their comparative performance. Remember when she kicked his ass in the debate, perhaps their only debate? He is so traumatized by that experience that he will not debate her again, even on Fox News. He is running from her. He's too much of a coward because he recognizes she's smarter than he is and she's more mentally fit than he is and she's more competent than he is to be president. During the rally, he even blew the dust off an oldie, but a goodie, I imagine many MAGA Republicans would say. Uh, something that um, you know he happened to say about uh, uh, Hillary Clinton when she competed against him in the 2016 election. Chance of lock her up and calls for uh, his opponent to be prosecuted. But we're bringing him in at levels that nobody's ever seen, and we're doing it by stupid people like Kamala. She's a stupid person. Stupid person. I don't care. I don't care. So again, he just petulantly calls her stupid. His crowd says, lock her up. For what exactly? I have no idea. He doesn't really articulate a crime uh, for which uh, the vice president should be impeached or, or excuse me, uh, in prison. I should also say that when people at Harris rallies and Walls rallies call for Trump, who actually is a criminal, a convicted criminal to be locked up, Vice President Harris and Governor Walls actually urge the crowd to calm down and say, hey, listen, stop saying that. It'll be the courts who take care of it. So again, it, it illustrates another stark contrast, whereas Trump either joins in calls uh, for his opponents to be locked up uh, or doesn't do anything to silence calls for his opponents to be locked up. The vice president will actually try to calm her supporters publicly into not calling for the imprisonment of her political opponent, even though he is a convicted criminal. But here in this clip, Trump actually calls for the vice president to be impeached and prosecuted. Murdered because of her action at the border and thousands more will follow in rapid succession. 
She should be impeached and prosecuted for her actions. <laughs> Murdered because. So we're going to do a video about this separately, but of course, he's making reference to a recent ICE report, which indicated that there are 13,000 uh, migrants in this country who have uh, committed either in the United States or elsewhere homicide. And what he is doing is lying and suggesting that all 13,000 are here because of Vice President Harris, when in fact, according to the Department of Homeland Security and ICE, the vast majority of these people entered under previous administrations, including Donald Trump, and the 13,000 uh, uh, migrants who have committed homicide who are here, most of them ha are either in some sort of prison, state or federal prison, or they served sentences already. So again, crucial fact checks that Trump is deliberately omitting to lie to his followers. And speaking of lying to his followers, Donald Trump turns the topic to uh, former Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi on January 6th and suggests that it wasn't he, as the sitting president of the United States, who was in charge of national security and responsible for, uh, you know, uh, deploying the National Guard, that it was actually Nancy Pelosi and it was really her fault and she should be held responsible for what happened on January 6th and not him. She said it was her fault. It was her total responsibility. I couldn't believe the daughter released the tapes, but they weren't really released. They were gotten somehow. Somebody gave them. And she took total responsibility, J6. Nancy Pelosi said she, she turned down thousands of troops, National Guard. Now, you didn't need thousands. You didn't need 10,000. I over 10,000 or more. So he didn't. There was no official memo or order for 10,000 National Guard troops. And here's the reality. Let's take everything Trump says at face value, which, of course, you should never do because he's a pathological liar to a far greater extent than any Democrat who has ever lived. But let's generously grant him the benefit of the doubt and say, you know what, Donald, we'll take everything you say at face value. Let's say Nancy Pelosi did refuse a formal offer from Donald Trump for 10,000 National Guard troops. When the riot actually occurred, Donald Trump could have given the order to deploy the National Guard immediately. He didn't need Nancy Pelosi's permission. He didn't need her agreement. He didn't need uh, the mayor of D.C.'s permission. He needed no one's permission. Donald Trump, as the sitting president of the United States, had unilateral authority to deploy the National Guard and needed no one's permission and could have done it over their objection. The mayor of D.C., Nancy Pelosi, could have insisted, no. Don't you dare deploy the National Guard. And he could have given them the finger and done it anyway, because, of course, the president of the United States is more powerful than the Speaker of the House, more powerful than the mayor of Washington, D.C. And when it comes to the National Guard, he is ultimately their commander in chief. They ultimately take their orders from him and no one else. So even if everything he said was true and Nancy Pelosi somehow contributed to the lack of preparation for defending against the January 6th insurrectionists, Donald Trump could have resolved it instantly. As soon as he saw it on Fox News that his supporters were attacking the Capitol, he could have picked up the phone and said, get the National Guard there immediately. And instead, he watched it unfold for three hours and actively took steps to try to pressure uh, Republican politicians to overturn the results of the election. So when he did pick up the phone, it was to try to pressure Republicans to steal the election from President Biden. So. Absolute insanity from Donald Trump. Some more clips to play. I'm here only because they cheat and they cheat in this state, especially in Philadelphia. And I mentioned a couple of the areas, but for the most part, but Philadelphia is out of control. Detroit is out of control. Atlanta is out of control. Places are out of control. Out of so Donald Trump insists that it's his opponents who cheat when in reality it's actually Donald Trump. Who cheats. Donald Trump was the one who attempted to steal a free and fair election from President Biden. It was Donald Trump who not only uh, incited a riotous insurrectionist mob to attack the Capitol, to murder his vice president, to murder Republican politicians if need be. Donald Trump was the one who conspired to submit fake false electors, knowingly fake false electors, to the United States House of Representatives so that Vice President Pence could just unilaterally throw the election to Trump himself. It was a constitutional breach unlike any we have ever seen and uniquely disqualifying, thus proving that Donald Trump is objectively morally inferior to any Democrat ever. But Donald Trump insists in a form of projection that it's actually his opponents who cheat when in fact it's only ever been him. So typically unhinged rally from Donald Trump, but he seems even more 
vicious and upset and triggered, uh, especially because he probably knows because people have probably told him, hey, the polls show more Americans think you're dumb and think that the vice president's smart and think that she's mentally fit and competent, but that you're not mentally fit and that you're you are incompetent. And it probably triggers him knowing that he is so much less intelligent and is, in fact, quite stupid compared to his Democratic opponent. So it's probably why he's acting out the way that he is. In the meantime, let me know what you think in the comments.